Coach, just talk a little bit about going and trying to get your second road win of, of the season, of the conference at, at Bradley. What do you expect from them? What do, what do you need to see your team do? Yeah, you know, Bradley, they'll be um, probably as physical as anyone we've faced. Um, so we'll, we'll really have our work cut out for us. Uh, very well coached, definitely better than what their conference record is saying they are. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll just have to be ready to meet the challenge from a mental standpoint, because it, it's going to be physical. Yeah, and just getting your first road win, is there just like a sign of relief by the guys? Like, OK, we can go do this. Let's. Well, I, I don't know if it was a relief, but I mean, I, I know they felt good about it. Um, you know, we've. We've had stretches where we've played okay on the road. It's just been like like a like a four or five minute stretch each game, mm -hmm. into the first half, beginning of the second half, and even the other night we, we had some problems finishing out the half. Luckily, we made a couple buckets to stop the bleeding, but we're we're going to have to try to you know end halves a little better. And I, I think if we can do that, we'll have more success on the road. And Julio's back. I heard you talk talk a little bit about. Yeah. Being a little sore, but I mean, he went yeah. and put up that performance. And how's he feeling now? You know, it's just one of those day to day things. I just think it's soreness. Um, you know, if he gets stiff, he has a hard time getting going again. Um, but but I think uh, I think it's more of, of of him not wanting to partake in all of practice some days, <laughs> which, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're steadily dealing with that. But um, obviously, um, our trainer, Lanny, does a good job, and we're just trying to keep it loose. I do think it stiffs up on him a little bit, but um, I, I think once he's in the game, he, he's okay. Coach Julio made top ten plays on Sports Center the other night. What does that type of exposure mean to Missouri State basketball? I thought it was cool for for him, and, and obviously for our guys. Um, you know, it's it's good to have players that can that can dunk like that, I guess. But um, I think it's more so for the players than, than anybody else. But. Uh, ho hopefully that's not our last time on Sports Center. Did you ever dunk like that? No. no, no. <laughs> what well, goes through a coach's mind when he's gonna go, go do something like that? Is like he better yeah. make this? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, if he if he would have missed that, that that probably would have not been good for him. It would not have been good for us either. Um, you know, with these kids, I just never know what they're going to do. But as long as he makes it, it's okay. Um, but if he would have missed it, then we would have had to learn a lesson the hard way. Coach, you got, I guess, classes starting up here on Monday. Do, is there anything definite on, on Obadiah on what his status is on the squad? No, I mean, he'll be in class on Monday. Yeah, but but nothing nothing with the team. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about Josh uh, Webster? He's gone, you know, a, a D2 school, a, J, a, a JUCO school, a D1 yeah. school. Was there any kind of thought, well, maybe I don't know if I want to take this guy because he's been around a lot of different places? Well, you know, typically when you see a kid jump around like that, you, you, you do think that, you think red flag. But, but his situation was a little different because he, uh, he's grown so much since high school. So coming out of high school, he was, a, uh, he was just a Division II player, and I think he had the red shirt at Division II level. Mm -hmm. And uh, to his credit, he's really worked on his game. He's grown. Um, you know, he uses his, his mind more than his, his body when he plays. And, um, you know, he, he left after one year of, uh, of playing at Division II because he wanted to be a Division I player. And he thought going to junior college would be the best way, so he didn't have to sit out, I believe. That, that's the rule. And then, obviously, uh, one year of junior college was enough, and then he jumped on at Texas Tech, which is it's hard to say no to a power five. And then when you get there, you realize that they've got some other guys in front of you that are pretty good, some, some NBA guys. And then for us, um, being a first-year head coach, needing a point guard in, in the most desperate manner in which you could need one, uh, we, we, we checked out his uh, character through, through people that have coached him and obviously through his high school coach and things like that. But he has definitely taken a road that's a little um, unorthodox. But... We're glad he's here. I always joke with him, uh, you know, I kind of wish we had him for two years because I think he'd be really good next year. But uh, we'll, you know, we'll try to continue to develop him the rest of the year. You said he grew. How many inches do you know? I, I, I don't know exactly. I just knew that he got bigger and stronger for sure. Yeah. And, I mean, he has his degree already. I mean, he got his, his yeah. a, a JUCO degree and then his, his regular undergrad degree, and now yeah. he's working on the Masters. I mean, the guy's getting degrees too. Yeah, he's a high-character kid, a great family. Um, he finished his degree this summer. I think he took maybe 18 hours in order to be eligible to play this year as a grad transfer. And, um, he's going to start his second semester of grad school on Monday. And 
and uh, we, we anticipate him finishing it. Being an Illinois State guy, do you still have that dislike for Bradley? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think it ever goes away. Um, but you know, now being the Bears head coach, I, I dislike everybody in the league that that's not Missouri State. Um, but uh, that it was always fun being a part of that rivalry. Um, and you know, it was really good in the '80s and the '90s. It, it, it's kind of tailed off a little bit. Um, but, but hopefully I think both those programs are good this year. I think they both had really good games last year against each other. They split. Prior to that, Illinois State had won. I mean, I, I don't know how many in a row, but it was it was a pretty good number. In fact, when I was an associate head coach there, I don't think we lost to Bradley. Now, obviously, as a player, that's back when they made their run to the Sweet 16. They, they thumped us a couple times when I played there. But um, it, it'll be fun being back in that part of the, the, the Valley for sure. Mm -hmm. What do you make of the Valley so far this year? It's just kind of been all, kind of been all over the place right now, but it's yeah. fun. Yeah, um, it, it's, we're just three games in. I mean, it, it's hard to really get a good feel. Um, I know some teams have had some injuries. Uh, Drake lost a really good player. I think Valpo lost a player last night. Um, I want to say that uh, 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 Southern Illinois had, had played a game or two without two of their top five. So it's early. It's early. It's still Loyola's league until somebody else wins it. Um, Bradley's better than 0-3 for sure. And uh, I think maybe in another week and a half, six games in, maybe even seven games in, we'll, we'll start to see some, some separation.